From FSN in Washington, I'm Nina Maria Potts for the latest world headlines. U.S. President Joe Biden has announced a fresh package of weapons for Ukraine in a bid to reinforce the country's forces battling against Russia's invasion. The German government says it's working with neighboring countries to help get weapons to Ukraine. Criticism has grown in recent days that Berlin isn't doing enough. And Vladimir Putin says it's not necessary for Russian lives to be wasted trying to storm the Azovstal metal factory in the southern Ukrainian city of Mariupol. Brought to you by Triangle Access Broadcasting, here's a look at the weather in the Oak 93.5 listing area. For tonight, partly cloudy skies, low around 54. Friday, mostly sunny, high around 82. Friday night clear, low around 56. Saturday, mostly sunny, high around 82. And Saturday night clear skies, low around 58. Keep it here on Oak 93.5. I'm now cast meteorologist Jim Vaughn. Ladies and gentlemen, you're now tuned into Chat City with P. Ross. Conversations and interviews are in the queue. Listen or join in. Here she is, P. Ross. Here I am, P. Ross. Hello. Hey, everybody. It's your girl, P. Ross. And I welcome you to our show, Chat City. My guests today are Nina Walker of Sand Hills Community Action Program. She is the executive executive director. And I also have with me uh, today, or who will be calling in later today, is Richard Bradford. And he is a drummer and the leader of the TCB band out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. Nina. Yes. How are you, ma'am? I'm doing very well. How are you? I'm doing fine. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today here on the show. Thank you and let's for see if, me. You're welcome. And let's see if Richard is on now. Let's see. Richard, are you there? Okay, he's not here yet. So anyway, uh, Nina, how was Easter for you this past weekend? It was great. Good to have an extra day off. <laughs> <laughs> it went by too fast, but it was good to have the extra day. Oh, okay. Yeah. And what did you do this week after Easter? What did I do? Oh, I had a um, birthday party to go to where we wore um, red tutus. Uh So it was a a fun event. Uh Really nice. Good to get out of the house and celebrate someone's birthday. Yeah. Okay. And let's see if Richard has joined us now. I believe he has. Richard, are you there? Uh, Yes, I am. I had to recall. Okay. No problem. Uh, Richard, thank you for joining us. It's all good. Thank you for joining us. And as I mentioned, we have Richard Bradford of the tcb band tcb stands for throwback collaboration band richard how was easter for you easter was wonderful what did you do for easter oh you know the main thing you get out with friends and family mainly family and we uh had a nice little cookout and two relatives came in from out of town maryland and dc and just sit back and you know Cherish the things that you like, you know, that you love the most, being around family. Uh, since COVID is hopefully is leaving us, maybe not as fast as we like, but uh, things are looking very promising. Okay, good. Now, did you master the grill at the cookout? I, I, I tried to slay the grill a little. <laughs> just a little. <laughs> okay. All right. And And what did you do after Easter? Up until uh, today? Well, uh, besides Easter for me, I had to go back to work. Uh, you know, back to the, the wonderful life of working. Okay. Hey, yeah, the wonderful life of working. That's good. Now, as we know, yesterday, or for some of you, you may, you may not know this, uh, yesterday, well, everybody knows that yesterday was April the 20th, uh, also known as 420, right? And... Uh, that's also a day that's celebrated by weed smokers. Do you two know about that? I heard about it. <laughs> Richard, do you know anything about 420? You no, know, you may have to fill me in a little more <laughs> of what you mean by 420. I'm, I'm, I'm lost on that one. Okay. So 420 is a day that is celebrated. Now, I don't smoke. I'm not going to put anybody on <laughs> under the spotlight. It's not my business whether you do or you don't. 
But uh, uh, it's a day that's celebrated by those that smoke marijuana. Um, it was something. Uh, uh, yeah, I heard that. Yeah, 420. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, uh, and the reason why they celebrate it, to my understanding, is for two reasons. One is to uh, bring awareness to legislation of marijuana and, uh, you know, its benefits, I guess, versus its downsides, sides to it. And uh, also uh, just to celebrate the day. It's known nationally worldwide to my understanding and um uh what worldwide worldwide yes and it's my understanding that um uh 420 smokers (laughs) they want to uh bring these excessive laws to a halt uh when it comes to marijuana and marijuana we know is an illegal drug in a lot of places I haven't really followed up on where it's legal, where it's not legal or whatever, you know, what areas it's legal, but in a lot of areas it's illegal. So um, it's my understanding that this, this particular day was started by a group of high schoolers back in the seventies. And, um, (laughs) and uh, it just, Oh, I think they started smoking weed daily at four twenty p.m. on a regular basis and from there it just became a fad and a phenomenon across the world so nina how do you feel about marijuana and 420 i well i'll say i don't smoke marijuana but i heard i heard about 420 and what i wanted to know was why was it 420 and what was the significance of the date and I thought it was interesting that you just said that the, you know, the high schoolers started smoking at 420 each day <laughs> because yesterday I was in the, I was uh, purchasing my lottery ticket. And so the, the cashier was saying, yes, yeah, my favorite day, 420. And I was like, well, what's, what's the, what's the 420 for? What's the significance? And he told me that it was the police code for possession of marijuana, oh, a 420. Okay, okay. So I guess there's like some different things floating around out there about it. Uh huh. I will say this. I, I don't smoke marijuana, but I have tried that cream on my knees. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it works. Really? It works okay. really fast. Yeah. I mean, uh-huh. it's, it's a really good pain reliever. It, and it, it's almost unbelievable. It really is. Wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. So here's my question question to you all okay have you seen the cb cbd stores and products that have seemed to have you know just been on the rise since i don't know the last few years have you noticed any of these cbd yes products and things that's where i got the cream for my knees yes Uh cbd cbd oil or cbd cream um and it does it works it really does okay how about you richard uh, I will definitely say the CBD stores have flourished on almost every corner. Mm-hmm. There's something that they sell that has CBD in it. Mm-hmm. Um, I have not tried any of the products as of yet. Uh-huh. Um, I guess I I just thought it was more of a kind of hype, but as we know, all medicines are made of something or some substance, and a lot of medicines that are out here we really don't have a clue what's in the medicine Mm -hmm. for this to be more of a natural plant oil based type uh thing then i guess it'd be fine um i i well like i I don't smoke so it's kind of i guess it doesn't really apply to me you know you see it but you it's kind of almost like a subliminal. You see it, but you don't see it. Uh, I find it to also be amazing what you told me about the 420 date with the students. You know, they started smoking on 420. Uh-huh. Heaven the did if it had been 421, you know, <laughs> four minutes, 21 you know, uh, uh, seconds. But it, it, it is what it is. I, I saw actually a, a thing on television yesterday, and I didn't really – catch the whole glimpse of that, but it was a gentleman where they were trying to legalize it in North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Um, I I will say if they probably would legalize it in North Carolina, um, 
that would probably cut down on the tobacco industry a lot, or they would uh, the industry will start changing a lot more. I don't know how they're going to protect those fields or how they, um, I guess this is a controlled marijuana plant where they don't have certain chemicals added in it to give people that, that super high that they're looking for. I would just, my only biggest fear is, is kind of like with the alcohol, it would be a lot more people driving under the influence of something. It would, you know, it's always okay in somebody's background to do what they do, mm-hmm. you know, where they feel like you, you shouldn't have the right to stop them from getting drunk, getting high, you know, saying what they say or doing what they do. So it's, it's always going to be a political issue to that side. But the main political issue, I think, is all, all we see is going to be it's all about the money. Mm-hmm. Bottom line, if, if if corporate America can control the money of it, then they have two thumbs up. If they what, don't what, feel like they can control it all the way, then it, it, it'll probably be something. Okay, I noticed some that. Conflict uh, of interest. I'm sorry, I didn't let you finish talking. I'm sorry about that. Um, okay. Um, I've also noticed that uh, a lot of dispensaries seem to be easily accessible for purchase. Um, I don't, again, don't know a whole lot about it, uh, but uh, I've read or seen and even heard people talk about uh, the purchase of dispensaries. So do any of you two know anything about that in detail? I don't. Richard? Not a lot. Okay. I, I would say no. Most of the ones or uh, people that I've met all of these wonderful years who do what they do, you know, I would say most of it was just street product, you know, when it comes down time to smoking for those that smoke. Uh-huh. So um, if when they do make it legal, I, you know, that's been the biggest thing I've heard. If they will, the 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 marijuana plants that we grow will not have was the TCB or the TCB something mm-hmm. in it that, that makes people get that, that high sensation. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can't say I do. I just used to know all the people who used to smoke a lot always clean their head to munchies. <laughs> Speaking of munchies, now I, I, I came across a story that said, uh, or a headliner that said pets getting into edibles. <laughs> With, Uh-oh. with uh, marijuana in it, and, and committing uh, or dying from it, or something like that. I saw, and I'm like, wow! wow. Put your oh. edibles up, people. <laughs> you know, you don't want uh, your pets getting into your marijuana laced edibles and getting sick or whatever. You know, but I've never, um, you know, I've been in places where people have did that and it's never been my thing uh was it offered to me yes i was always scared to try it um now i think it would be even scarier to try it i mean you hear of fentanyl laced marijuana or whatever you know people just put stuff in who do you trust you know and my thing is say no to drugs you know it's scary you hear a lot of that would sound like thing that I would think of, uh, I hope I didn't cut in, but yeah, I, my son had a friend who, a uh, friend they think got a hold of something that was late. It had him out there. It kind of reminds you of the uh, the movie Friday. Mm. If you remember <laughs> the comedy Friday when um, he got out there and started smoking that stuff and he was hiding in a chicken coop and all <laughs> kinds of stuff, you know. Uh-huh. Uh but you you have to, you have to be careful these days in regarding product of whatever you're doing these days. I mean, I hope it's all legal, you know, or whatever you do, but you know, be safe. Right. You know, these days, people take legal drugs and 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 and, and use them for every reason that they shouldn't use them, where they may not be going to their own personal doctor. They, they just look look for ways to, oh, man, I got a pain. Well, hey, I can give you this, man. This is supposed to be for pain. Yeah, give me mm-hmm. one of those. And they don't know if that's good or bad for their body. Right. And I, you know, 
I've, I've met people like that. Even if you ask me, you got nothing. Nah. I'm like, you're not going to take no drugs of mine and you mess around and have a heart attack or something because it wasn't meant for you. And then I'm going to jail for either manslaughter or murder. You know, if, if I, that's just the way I think. I think far and beyond. So I don't, I don't share any medicines or medications that I've had prior. And I, I, I don't, I don't usually take anything from anybody, maybe an aspirin. And think twice about that if I had to. Right, that's me. I don't care to take medication if I don't have to. One thing about that stuff, I don't like the way it smells. And you can tell, I mean, you you just know when when somebody's lit up a joint or whatever, you know, you can tell. I mean, you Mm -hmm. just smell it. And uh, I I can't stand the way it smells. I don't like the way cigarettes smell. But, uh, you know, that's if that's what people do, that's what they do. Right? Right. (laughs) Yeah. All right. It, uh, some more in the news or other things in the news. Netflix uh, warns of a crackdown on those that share their password <laughs> uh, on Netflix. Having uh, sharing uh, their password to get access to Netflix when they have not paid for a, a subscription. You guys hear about that? I heard about it. I'm not sure. I heard how. a little bit. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Well, I I don't share my Netflix password with anybody. I didn't even know if I I don't even remember a password or anything like that. But uh, apparently Netflix is losing a lot of business. Um, so there's some talk in the news about them cracking down on those that share their passwords with others to get the free to get the service at no cost to them. Um, so uh, that's a warning. <laughs> you know, that is a warning. And it, it reminded me of back in the day when um, uh, when we used telephones and there was like a telephone card. Like if you wanted to call long distance, you couldn't just call dial long distance. Uh, well, let me take that back. There was a some type of card that you paid for. No, let me. I'm not getting it right. Um, I, I, I remember that. Still in. Pa- Can still I ask in- Yes, go ahead. On the Netflix, I can't recall. I have a bunch of those different subscriptions. I thought they had a package plan for one, and then you have a package plan like if it's a, a, I don't know if it was like a family package plan, but where you you didn't really share your password, but it was a it was like a group thing. Like say you had a family of four, and and, and this is probably where where they're getting into it. And let's say you had a off at college, but you know you wasn't gonna pay for that cable and fee. So hey, I got this subscription. Uh, I'm paying the who knows twenty nine ninety nine package for mm-hmm. Netflix, and all of you guys we can all share off of it. And then of course your sibling uh, shares his password with somebody else, and so on and so forth. But I thought they had a package plan that was more like that. So unless they're looking at um, how do you track how many people are accessing the same password at one time, I can see how they could probably try to shut that down. Mm-hmm. You know, if your password was one, two, three, four, A, B, C, D, and also they look up near 15 people on that password, then they just, just shut it down. And say, oh, that password is bad. You got to subscribe to a new password. They'll probably contact the, 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 the host, and let him know that his password is being shared by, you know, at the maximum it should have been four, but they see that there's 15 out there and there's going to be some kind of penalty or late fee or a surcharge fee they're going to try to apply to them. Mm-hmm. So um, that might be a bug I done put in their ear, but <laughs> <laughs> that's, the only way I, that's the only way I can see them possibly trying to do that, you know, if, if they can track how many users are on that one password at one given time at that moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think they can, I think they've been doing that part though. Cause I think it does come in like two, three or four users or something like that. And it's just one password. And the purpose of it was, yeah, that you, yeah. Like, like you just said, like if there's a kid off at college, they can watch Netflix on the same, on the parents' account. Mm-hmm. You can take it to the beach with you and watch Netflix wherever you go. That was supposed to be the purpose of it. But yeah, it is one password. And I think I've had, I think I've experienced that before that like 
I might use it, my son uses it, and my nephew uses it. And maybe like if we were all on Netflix at the same time, maybe somebody gets booted out. So I think they've been doing that. So I don't know what they're going to do new. Uh huh. Yeah. Like I said, I, I'm I'm a single person, and I you know I I don't have to share with anybody. <laughs> so I've never paid attention to to that that part of uh, Netflix. I just, I rarely use it or rarely watch it. And so, um, you know, I don't know all the details of it, but it kind of reminded me of just back in the day, like uh, I was trying to get to the part of I remember being in college and us uh, sharing um, telephone numbers when you tried to dial long distance. Do you, any of you remember that? And I can't remember if it was a if it was actually somebody's credit card that was being used that was stolen <laughs> or if it was some type of phone card that was being used. Do I you, thought it was a phone card. A phone card, had, right. Yeah, it had some strange number that you had to dial that, that you access another line so you could dial out. Uh-huh. Prepaid So if you was at a pay phone booth or whatever, you know, you could get around that because it kind of went to that mm-hmm. versus you spending a lot of money in a, in a phone booth uh, thing that, that wonderful fee of whatever it might have been. I'm not 100% sure that's been a few years ago. Can't find a payphone booth anywhere anymore. <laughs> no, so, uh, no. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's a challenge yeah, within itself. Mm-hmm. Technology today. It's interesting how yes. much we've come up from years ago. But I remember years ago being in a mall. And matter of fact, it was Haynes Mall in Winston-Salem. And there was an AT&T store in that mall. And so this had to be like in the 90s. And I remember coming across a display that showed um, a telephone with a screen on it in which you would able to be uh, talking to the person on screen while you were on the telephone. And I thought, wow, that is so Video amazing. Video chat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember that. <laughs> so I was like, wow, you know, um, I would love to have that. But I figured the person or the people that I would talk to would have to have the same device, you know, so... But I just thought it was just far out of this world to be able to do something like that. Because I think we saw it like in the movies and stuff. Huh? I said to see and talk at the same time. Now we call it FaceTime. 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 I know, right? (laughs) All right. Tax season. is. We're still in tax season. But the question is, did you get your taxes in on April the 18th? Did you get them in on time? Just barely. Just barely. I was like you. Just barely. How about you, Richard? I waited till the last day because mm-hmm. I knew I had to pay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But for those of you that are listening or watching, um, you still just go ahead and get them done. You may face a penalty. The penalty may not be as bad as you think. Uh, if you need assistance, find your n- nearest tax office and see if someone can help you. Just don't not do your Just do not omit your taxes out of your life you got to have them done if you uh, bring in an income also if you feel that you cannot afford fees to pay a tax preparer uh, there are programs government programs out there that will um, allow you to do your taxes yourself for free and it's very easy self-explanatory you would just google or go to irs.gov and see those programs that are out there for you Okay. All right. As I mentioned before that we have in, we have chatting with me today, uh, Richard Bradford of the TCB band. He is the leader of the band and we have Miss Nina Walker, the executive director of, of SCAP, Sand Hills Community Action Program. Before we go any further, I'd like to let you know that you are listening to Oak 93.5 FM WRLY Raleigh, North Carolina. And you're listening to Chat City with P. Ross. I am P. Ross. All right. I think what we'll do is go ahead and get into our interview with Richard, who may have to leave us shortly. Um, Richard, how long have you been a musician? Yes, sir. Ooh. At least 30 years. Uh, more, more like about 45. 45 years. Okay, that's great. And yeah. uh, I know that you are a drummer. Are there other instruments that you play? I kind of tinker a little bit with some keyboards. Uh, I used to want to learn the bass, but I did not. 
but mainly drums was pretty much it. Uh, through my schooling from junior high on up, I loved the drums. My father was actually a drummer. Okay. Uh, as well. So, yeah, he was one time in jazz there back in the 60s. He was considered the third fastest drummer on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and through the military, uh, from the days of the lots of military people that came around. I don't know how true that was. And of course, they, I guess, had drum wars. He was a big jazz musician. So I have to take everybody's word for it. Man, your father can play. <laughs> well, that's fine. Uh huh. Yeah, usually that talent is okay. of, of music is passed on or is carried on throughout families that I've noticed. Um, that you know. That I know. Uh huh. All right. Richard, TCB Band. What does TCB stand for? It stands for Throwback Collaboration Band. Okay. What we try to do is mainly um, with all new technology and everything else that's going on and new genres of music that's incorporated in everything we do, it's like we're trying to keep that little bit of that old school nostalgia still, keep the funk alive, keep, you know, keep the old grooves around for all of us old heads that are still around and want to be around for a very long time. But we do like to have a little bit of a twist on some of the stuff we do, try to bring some current stuff in. So mainly, I pretty much kind of gone from like high school. I, 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 I want to do more in depth of that, but we kind of, I've started putting like back about my high school years and, and move forward up to about, well, I can't say, Almost up to current. We do play a couple of current songs, but mainly back when Parliament Funkadelic was like the world, and Rick James was the world, and Bootsy Collins and, and Function and Radio, you know, uh, Radio the group was uh, with them back from the Ghostbuster days and everything else, and and just everybody else, Stephanie Mills, Gladys Knight, you, you name it. We try to incorporate all of those, what I say, music that makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. um, and I, 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 I tease a little bit, but it, it, it's nothing against no other genre of music. I say, because when a musician had to play an instrument, you know, you had to actually play something. You didn't press a button, and it made this electronic sound and or, 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 or a low note that's lower than anything you can say, it's just a, a whoa. So I'm like, you have to actually play something, and a singer actually has to sing. Uh, and, you know, and it's, it's nothing meant upon that on anybody. So what you mean by that? You know, like, you just heard it in the rap. I'm like, oh, I said, I'm in the rap too. I said, I'm just saying you had to learn, you know, you had to learn how to play an instrument, mm -hmm. whatever the case may be, woodwinds, brass, you know, Strings, piano. You had to play the instrument in order to create sound, um, and that that's been going on since the beginning of time. Uh, so it, it, that's that's mainly it. We we, we like old school stuff. But the majority of the group is all of us are older guys. So some of them are now fortunate they're starting to even retire from their jobs or even their second career, uh, where they can just sit back and. And they they really should just get out there and just have a good time everywhere we go. Now, Richard, do you have? Let me ask you this: How how old is your band, TCB? Technically, we're approximately um, since I really pioneered this thing off. I would say it's about five six years old, but we've really only been kind of moving and shaking over the last three years. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had a few transitions in the group. Uh, uh, keyboard player that we, we had. He had to move back home, uh, back to Alabama. His name was Larry Lovegood. Uh, he was, I called him my creative guy. He could he could create a lot of original type stuff. Hopefully he'll come back up this way uh, real soon to do some business. Um, but uh, it's, it, it was first just three of us, and then uh, the guitar player, he left, and uh, one of 
one of the other gentlemen that's in the group now. Um, we call him Duke. But his name is Mark Thomas. He, he plays uh, guitar for us. And we said it was building, you know, like I said, people transitioning in and out, whether they, either they liked or they didn't like it, or careers, um, uh, jobs, and, and everything else that was going on in their life. Uh, so it was always a work in progress. And once it started even starting to gel more and more, uh, you know, just from playing, from being the garage fan to like, hey, man, we can go out here and get this stuff done. And it, you know, and we were steady working on some originals that we still haven't released on a lot of them uh, for one reason or another. But it, it, it started to, you know, to work and we got out there and people said, hey, y'all sound pretty good. Okay. And we started getting some, uh, some singers that can really sing. A young lady that can really have two young ladies that can sing now. Okay, that's uh, what I was getting at. Just, if you don't mind, hold on. Yeah, I wanted yeah. you to. Um, I, I was asking about uh, your band because I wanted, or how long you've been playing. Because my question to you is, have you had all the original members of your group since you started? And if no, can you tell us what the names of uh, the, the names of the people in your band and their uh, the instruments oh, yeah. that they play? Um, well. Uh, so one true original that's not with us, like I said, his name was Larry Lugger. He was the guitar, I mean, the keyboard player. Mm -hmm. um, he lived here in Seville for many years. He lost his mother and he went back to Alabama um, um, for different reasons, but he went back home. Uh, another gentleman named was Warren Dobby. Uh, uh, and uh, the last gentleman named was John Kirby. He moved down towards the Southern Pines area for a while. Other places. So when the some of the other people who came in, like I said, Mark Thomas, uh, he also has his own little recording studio in his house called Juice as Wow. Uh, he plays guitar for us. Uh, another great friend of mine. We've known each other, wow, longer than the, the group. I mean, before I knew some of the other gentlemen, named Michael Count. He's our bass player and vocalist. Um, Adolph Thomas, we used to be together in the Fayetteville Rollers Police Band. Okay. Uh, we used to go around doing a lot of community things uh, at the uh, elementary schools that say no to drugs. Uh, and his name is Adolph Thomas, once again. Uh, and we have uh, 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 two keyboard players that we are currently using is uh, Dominic Deaver. He also plays with uh, another group. He 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 just he's all over the place, but he's been providing a lot of help with us. And another gentleman that I played with named Ted Ash. Ted Ash is a he's a wizard on keys. Um, we performed with many uh, different artists that have come through the area. National recording artists: uh, Jeanette Harris, Gordon James, Paula. I know he didn't do Paula Ash. Pamela Williams, Eric Darius, we played with several times as well, uh, and, and, and and a few others that um, I could really I'd kind of go down the list. But those gentlemen um, were there, and then our lady singer name was Sybil Pickney. Uh, I used to call her the songbird when I first started hearing her sing. She's done some things overseas. Uh, as well, and you've heard us sing as, as well when we did the Cardinal uh, Cardinal Lake in, right. in your area. Right, so, and, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was saying, and then our newest lady, it's named Vanessa Holland. Okay. Uh, she's a high school friend of mine uh, that she has, she has some songs out to this very day that they she did them overseas. Well, she did one overseas, she did one year. Uh, they still get a little bit of airplay, and we're supposed to be working on some projects for her, but she really stepped up for us uh, here recently when our, when our other singer is going through some um, some back injury things she's got there, and so she's got to take it real careful, and, and we're all praying that she gets back with us real soon. And so with Vanessa in the group now, it's like, oh, wow. You know, uh, they have, the two ladies have two 
different styles, but they are really strong singers. Okay, um, I'm, I'm interested in, uh, well, I can't wait to hear your your new singer. I know Sybil did a great job, like you mentioned, at the uh, Cardinal Park on last year at the Juneteenth event in yeah. Southern in uh, Pine Bluff, we North Carolina. Juneteenth and her Little Gladys. <laughs> yeah, so uh, just to give you some insight on Richard, I, I met Richard, I've only seen Richard twice in person. And uh, I was told, I was, uh, I had a friend, uh, Kirby Hamilton Jr., also known as the funk player. He, the funk player. To- the funk player, yes. He told me about <laughs> uh, Richard down in Fayetteville, North Carolina, and I reached out to Richard a couple of times via Facebook, and we chit-chatted by Facebook a long time before we were able to actually do work together, and that work was bringing him into the Cardinal Park for a Juneteenth event. And that was I, I saw the band on tape, and I was like, oh, yeah, they're good. Uh, but uh, to see them live and in person is a, a better treat. You know, you guys do a wonderful job. And as you mentioned, uh, the genre of music that you've chosen to stay with, Kirby is the same way. He he he, he chooses oh, yes. to stay with the funk and the, the play of the 70s, uh, that 70s era. So I tried to recruit him. It was just too far of a drive for him. <laughs> you know, it's about a two-hour drive. Yes. Yeah. Have money, will travel. But, yeah, I, I understood He's awesome. He's an awesome keyboard player. Uh huh. He is. Now you mentioned uh, how music. Uh, I, I believe you mentioned a little bit of how music has changed and what you chose to stay with. But uh, tell me, how do you feel music w- will change in the future, the way it is now? I mean, how do you do you see it changing well, anymore? Yes, I do. And I'll say it like, um, oh, what was the name of that movie? Uh, Chris Rock was in. Uh, golly. Uh, no, was it Chris Rock or Chris Tucker? I can't remember. It was a six, a six Sense or something like that. It was almost like a space movie. Mm-hmm. And when he walked around, he was like the whole, like music just oozed, oozed out of whatever he was wearing. Or so I don't know. It was a, it was a crazy, crazy movie. Um, um, but. You know, with the sound effects and 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 and, and the, it, I don't know how to describe it. It was almost like um, it sounded spacey. It almost sounded like it was from the far east, but it had kind of an R&B feel. Then it had a little. It had like almost like every genre of music they tried to just roll it all up into one mm-hmm. and create something. So I do <laughs> see what music is gonna gonna evolve again. Everything evolves. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the, the question is, will it ever roll back to anything else? And so far, no. You know, who's going to say that? Nobody's really playing. There's a certain group of people who love to hear Bach, mm-hmm. you know, or Beethoven. You know, you're going to have that genre of people, and, and that's all they're going to want to hear. And then there's going to be someone who's going to want to hear the music of the days of the Jets, you know, the 21st. Well, this is 21st century. I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna call it the, the, the music of Star Trek or something that 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 be here sooner than we think. Um, <laughs> and it's, some people are gonna love that. So, you, and, and, and my personal opinion these days is you try to get in where you fit in. You find your niche. You do what you like to do. You try to entertain the people that likes to hear what you do. Mm-hmm. Uh, you may not be able to please everybody. But you can please somebody. Mm-hmm. And with a few billion people on the earth, hopefully I can find just a one-tenth of one percent to please. Mm-hmm. I would love to please all 100 percent, but mm-hmm. that still gives you a massive amount of people, you know, that will come out and enjoy what you do. What's your following? So many people I do. What's your following like now? What's my following? Mm-hmm. It's it's growing pretty heavy. Um, we we are starting to see quite a few people who are looking, you know, where y'all next gig? Where y'all next gig? Uh, and, and a little it's for every time for me. We have a performance coming up on May the first at the retired uh, military association off of, off Old Women's Road, and I I know that 
those who have been buying tickets, I think it's already, if it's not sold out, it's real close to being just sold out for that establishment. And I have a website, uh, www. I know it's long. I, I wish I could say, I could just, just say here, just click this link. So instead of me saying www.tcb, that's the acronym of TCB, belong to so many things. I, you know, I just spelled it all the way out of throwbackcollaborationband.com. And they can see uh, my group and they can see our dates that we've already have hooked up for this year. And we were working on some more, well, actually get the videos on that site as well. Okay, now um, you said, but, let's go back to May 1st. You said you have a gig on May 1st at where? Yes, at the Retirement Military Association. And you said that it's was in... RMA. It's off of Old Wilmington Road in Fayetteville. Okay, the city is where I was trying to get to. All right. <laughs> so Old oh, okay. Wilmington Road in Fayetteville, right, North in Carolina. Fayetteville. Okay, and what time is that event, uh, uh, Richard? Uh, it's starting around, I think it's 8 o'clock. Let me double check myself. Um, um, well, they can see that on... That they, can, they, see, they can see that yeah, on your website, right? On, absolutely. Okay. Now, let, let's talk about music in schools. I know when I was a youngster in school, we had music class. Uh, it was like a mandatory thing that we stopped by. Uh, I guess it was for about 30 minutes to see our music teacher. Did you have that in your school, Nina? I did. Okay. <clears throat> I did. Are they doing that in schools today? I think it's an elective, but I don't think it's mandatory. Okay. Because I know band was an option. I was in sixth grade band, seventh grade, eighth grade. Um, and I think course was an option. Uh, if, if you made the course, you, you were in course somewhere in, in like middle school, what we call middle school. But I remember us having to order or get these, I think we paid $2 for these little instruments called recorders. Do you remember mm -hmm. those? Yes. How about you, Richard? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I remember. Yeah, and we had to go. It was like a mandatory music class, and we had to go in there and and play those recorders. I don't think we ever had a a a, a formal class training class on how to hit those notes and make them sound pretty. But um, we had to do that. And again, like I mentioned, uh, we had to go into a chorus uh, a music class and learn music. Um, Richard, how do you feel about music in schools being mandatory today? You, you think that it would be nice uh -huh. uh, it's a, a lot of things have changed I, I don't know if they could maybe they could do it in the elementary schools or or the, like you said middle school because they need to find out what attract young minds interest uh, before you know everything gets too far gone and and, and they get sidetracked because I know one thing for sure, and it's just a joke, if they probably had a mandatory thing where everybody could play a video game in school, mm -hmm. they, 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 they probably would have closed-out class. So it would be nice to know a lot of the, a lot of the things that I hear, like almost like recreation. Mm -hmm. It's almost an option these days for school, music, uh, it, just standard stuff, industrial arts. You know, those, those types of things have gone to the wayside maybe because of technology in, a, in some sense or budgeting, as they would like to say. But it would really be nice for them to keep music and things of that nature in school. Yeah. And I would definitely say for a lot of the, for all students, but that was, that you know, music used to be the one escape, regardless of what else was going on in life. Enemies, friends, foes, music was kind of the universal language that people could all relate to. Yes. It was like it's kind of like the peace treaty line, you know, of, of things to do. Yes. So that would be wonderful uh -huh. um, to learn how to, for those, you know, to continue to play. I wish I would have been more of a person who learned how to play the piano. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'll tell any, any, any musician or any people who want to be musician, I'm like, learn the piano. You don't learn anything else. Learn the piano. <laughs> because the piano is the, it's the root. It's yes, the, right. it, 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 to me, I mean, it's the root of, of 
all the instruments. It's, it's, it's truly the root. Uh, I, I don't, I don't know how to, to explain that anymore, you know. They say, what are you talking about? You know, you're just an old guy. What are you talking about? But when you can play the piano, you can hear all the chords. You can hear all the, the harmony and, and, and everything that you want and that sound that you're looking for. Um, and then you can apply all the other additives to it on the side. But, you know... That's an awesome thing to do. Yes, I've had. Uh, how do you know? I, I was going to say I had several people in my family that I mean, my grandmother and all her sisters, all of her sisters, well, but one, played. They either had a piano or organ in their homes, and like you said, it's it's the root instrument. If you ask me, well, I mean, you know, uh, the, it is. You know, no offense the to any of the others. <laughs> Only ones that are uh, the, the most of you musicians these days truly looking for a musician that can play. On the one place you're going to find them first, and that's going to be in the church. In the mm -hmm. church, Richard, you've played you know, with some A-listers. Uh, you've played with some big name folks. Who was the the biggest name uh, in the music industry that you've the had the the opportunity that, to play with? Uh, <laughs> I've been, I think I've just been blessed to play with a lot of the people I've played with. Probably the number one on, well, everybody knows right now, Eric Eric Darius is probably about the hottest thing out there in, in the smooth jazz on stack. Him and, and, and I, I didn't never play with Gerard Albright or nothing, but uh, Eric is, you know, he's moving up that ladder. Pamela Williams is another awesome sax player. I mean, all the ones, are, they're really, they're, all of those guys are, are, are super, but I'm just talking about, now, as that, that household name starts to kick in, mm -hmm. um, uh, it, some people look twice. Uh, played with uh, a lot of a lot of people. Even my friend Willie Bradley, he's he he he's got his stuff together right now. And as a trumpeter, he's starting to roll up the charts and, and starting to be you know getting his name out there. Uh, uh, Musicians out of Raleigh uh, mm -hmm. and everywhere else, but I would say Eric and on the Southern Soul, Sir Charles Jones. But now I, 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 I played with uh, I played with a bunch of people on, uh, uh, from there too, from the old days of the Chocolate Buttermilk Band. We backed a lot of people. Uh, we backed Bishop Bull. <laughs> we backed. So many, I can't even start thinking all the names of uh, Clarence Carter. I back before, uh, it, it, and I just, I just say it was. I was just being blessed, being in the right place at the right time. There's a lot of awesome musicians out here that can that play percussions and drums. You know, it, it's all about timing sometimes. And if, if you, you know, they know you can be there and do what needs to be done. You get in a, I call it the inner ring. You know, it's almost like, like, like a record. You know, mm -hmm. the, the needles on the record, to those that remember what a record is, and mm -hmm. it always spirals towards the center. Well, if you can get to the center, you know, it, it, or, 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 or that part where there's nothing there, that, that little inner ring circle, if you can get into that inner ring, you find yourself meeting a lot of people in that center, where the outside is, is spiraling outside of the, the realm. So if you can get to that inner ring, you, you just you just start meeting a lot of people. It's like, well, how do you know this person? How do you know that person? How do you, you know, you didn't meet this person. You know, I'm like, okay. You know, I, I don't know what to tell people, but okay. Uh, I, I can't even, you know, I would have to probably sit down and get a, a list out of all the people that I've, I've knew, met, or have performed with uh, by chance, luck, or anything else. From Dizzy Gillespie, I've, I've, I've rehearsed a lot of time when I was in college with him. Donald Byrd was a friend of my father's. They used to play together a little bit. Um, I, I've, just, I've just been fortunate. Uh, then... I guess, like you say, being in that kind of a music life, uh, I've been around a lot of people. But okay. I, I never really chased, I didn't chase my dream the way I wanted to, and I should have I really pursued it. Uh, and Richard. I especially say that when... 
big change was a lie. It's never yeah. too late. It's never too late. It's never too late to chase your dreams. Oh, no, I'm, I'm still chasing. Okay. That's why I have my day. Hey. It's never too late. <laughs> now, before we go any further, I'd like to mention that you are listening to Oak 93.5 WRLY Raleigh, North Carolina, and you're listening to Chat City with P. Ross. I am your girl, P. Ross. Uh, we have with us today Richard Bradford of the TCB Band, and we also have Nina Walker, uh, the executive director of Sand Hills Community Action Program, which is located in Southern Pines, North Carolina. Nina, thank you for coming today, and welcome to the show. Thank you. Nina, how did you get into this line of work? Actually, by mistake. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was I was working for a temp company and it was one of my assignments um uh 27 years ago and I I've, I've been there since. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, I guess we need to tell our listeners what SCAP is, Sand Hills Community Action Program. Yeah, so Sand Hills Community Action Program is a 501c3 nonprofit first of all. Um we're also a community action agency um one of 34 community action agencies in the state of North Carolina and one of over 1,000 um, across the United States. And community action agencies are all different, but we are the same in that our tagline is helping people changing lives. So what we do is help people, um, low-income people specifically. We're an anti-poverty organization, and we help low-income people to become self-sufficient. Um, and the way that that's done differs at every community action agency, um, but specifically at the community action agency I work for, um, the tools that we use are education and housing to sort of help low-income people become self-sufficient. That's awesome. Uh, Tell us how one can enter a self-sufficiency program or a program such as yours. Okay. So, like I mentioned, um, There are 34 community action agencies in the state of North Carolina. There's a community action agency that serves all 100 counties of North Carolina. So all you would have to, all one would have to do is Google community action agency near me, and that'll bring up the community action agency um, closest to you. Or you could look on our um, state association website, which is the North Carolina community action association. Um, But as I mentioned, there's a community action agency serving all 100 counties of North Carolina. Um, And just Google it. Um, It's just a short application process. Um, It's income eligibility. And again, we are assisting low income people right now because of COVID. Our income guidelines have increased. So um, where we're usually at 100%, 125% of the poverty guidelines, we're now able to assist people at 200%. So just to give you sort of an idea, um, a one-person household could make, I want to say it's about twenty-six or $27,000 a year and still qualify. And what we can help um, these individuals do under our self-sufficiency programs is we can pay tuition for um, short-term trainings, usually like two or three years, something that can be finished up in two or three years and end up with a, uh, the individual could end up with a certification that increases their chances of employability or better employment. So a lot of times we do, um, in our community action agency, we pay for truck driver training, dental assistant training, um, barber and beauty schools, um, anything that uh, can be finished up in a, a short term period and get people to work. That is awesome. So if you have a niece, nephew, cousin, friend, sister, or brother Send them that's all. just sitting around the house with twiddling thumbs trying to figure out their next income, have them to Google. What is that again, Nina? Community Action Agency near me. Community Action Agency near me. Mm-hmm. To see if they qualify for one of these programs where it's government-assisted, I do believe, yes. funding. Mm-hmm. It's funded by the state of this particular program is funded by the state of North Carolina. So it's grant funding is totally free of charge to those individuals who pursue it. Um, And it it could change their lives. It could change their lives. They could go to school for a short period of time and learn dental assisting, truck driving or beauty or barber 
school. That yeah. is a wonderful program. Mm -hmm. And that's just a few of the things, you know, it, it just depends on the person and what they're inclined to do or, you know, what their interests are. Um, those were just some off the top of my head, but yeah, we can do anything that that individual is interested in doing, even if it's curriculum courses. But again, it does have, they have to at least have a little bit maybe so that, that they can definitely finish up within that three year period. Okay. Any utility assisted programs? Yeah. Um, and actually right now, because of COVID, we are able, oh, yeah, the Duke Progress Energy right now are sending out turnout notices. They're sending them out to everybody. So, you know, while we were dealing with COVID, people were able to defer those utility bills and the time has come for, to pay the piper. So um, those who have been affected by COVID-19, either if you were, if you lost employment, you were laid off, somehow your income was reduced because of COVID. Um, you can call your community action agency and get some help with those um, utility bills or past due rent that you have. If you owe your landlord um, rent money and it's directly related to COVID, community action is um, able to help. That's wonderful. Now, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had a uh, realtor here uh, talking about real estate. Does uh, these programs that you offer assist in any way when it comes to real estate? Ours does. So every, again, every community action agency is different. My community action agency in particular is also a public housing authority. We are a section eight only public housing authority. So we, um, on a regular basis, part of what we do is rental assistance for low income, um, households. So we do help with real estate and our Section 8 program also has a home ownership component. So we're also able to um, just at the same as we pay rent, we're able to pay mortgage payments just the same, pretty much the same way. Oh, wow. That's great. Nina, we appreciate folks like you, well, thank you so much. <laughs> and these programs uh, and yeah. that offer these uh, programs for assistance, those that are low income or just having a hard time right now trying to get on their feet. Yeah. Again, Google one of these agencies. Tell us what it is again. Community ne Action Agency. So just Google Community Action Agency near me and the, um, the Community Action Agency that serves your location will come up. And if not that, try the North Carolina Community Action Association. And you can even, you know, Google them, call them, and they'll, they'll be happy to direct you. That's wonderful. Uh, so do not let these uh, precious jewels go untouched. We've just released to you, if you hadn't heard of them already, we are out here about trying to, uh, we are about trying to help our communities in any way possible that we can. And that's all communities uh, when it comes to people. Okay. Uh, so this is the ending of our show. I appreciate Mr. Richard Bradford's time, uh, drummer and oh, no lead problem. of the TCB band. Real quickly, Richard, tell us how one can book your band, how we can contact you. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, if you will go to www.throwbackcollaborationband.com, and when you go to my site, there is a contact location at the bottom of that page. And it also has two phone numbers there. It has mine, um, my name is Richard Braffitt, and also Adolph Thomas. Or they can send us an email uh, through that, and then we will receive it that way as well for booking. Okay. And again, tell us where that uh, your next uh, performance will be. Our next performance will be at the RMA, which is the Retired Military Association, in Fayetteville off the old Wilmington Road for anyone who recalls any parts of Fayetteville, if they remember the old J.C. Fairground off of Gillespie Street, they know they will have a, they are right, right there where, where, where it would be at. Okay. So, so if you, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm so fine. if you're looking for something to do outside of your area, try Fayetteville, North Carolina this on May 1st. Okay. Again, uh, Nina Walker of Sand Hills Community Action Program. We thank you for joining us today. And also Richard Bradford of TCB Band. And we thank you, listeners. Uh -huh. We thank you, listeners, for listening in to our 
another show, Chat City with P. Ross. We wish you a great rest of the week. Be safe. Rocky.